<laughs> Thank you. All right, so guys. Okay, so the way I work, right, is um, it's about connecting the workout together. Okay, I don't want, I don't really tend to do things that are kind of outliers. You know, if I've got a structure, the way I structure it is like, okay, I'm gonna start with one thing. Maybe it's like I, I like to start with ball handling, to be honest, because for me, you know, the way the game's going, everyone is, you know, becoming ball hand. Everyone needs to handle the ball basically from the bigs to the to the littles, right? So, just as a theme, the way I like to start my workouts is with ball handling, right? I might progress the ball handling, right, from one thing and kind of build it up, and that's you'll see as a theme to my workouts. Let me get a couple of you guys out here, all right? Bring a ball with you. Just two. Two guys. It's fine. So as they're coming over, as I said, I like to start with one thing, all right? First thing is the base, right? Can you guys show me a base? I said bring a ball with you. Got to pay attention. Okay, regardless. Show me your base. Let me see it. Okay? All right. Now, I like to say, Sit in a chair, all right? Think, pretend, about, pretend you're sitting in a chair, okay? You might have your legs not shoulder width apart because that's more for the shot, okay? But if you're getting down and you wanna handle the ball, you wanna get it just a little bit outside your shoulders, okay? All right, and then sit, all right? Back straight, chest out, okay? That's your base position, all right? Now, as I said, I like to start with one thing, all right? So for now, we'll just start Every step we take, we're gonna take a dribble, okay? Let me show you, all right? Short, choppy steps, okay? The reason is foot activation, I call it. You always wanna have as much, um, well, your, your, hand, your hands wanna be on the, uh, your hands, sorry, your feet wanna be touching the ground as much as possible, right? Because it helps you change direction quicker, all right? If you're taking long steps like this, all right, you can't change direction as quick, but if you're activating your feet, even if you're going into the layup, all right, changing direction, okay? So, short choppy steps, all right, we're gonna be down. Ball is gonna be under your hips, okay? You don't wanna be dribbling the ball up here. All right, we're just gonna take one, two, all right? All right, nice short choppy steps. Right here, turn back, use the other hand, okay? Switch hands when you get to the free throw line, okay? Let me see it. Good, good. Good. All right, good job. Even from now, all right, listening to your body, all right? Try to connect everything. As I said, everything's connected, right? So you have to pay attention to what's going on, especially for you guys when you're younger. All right, a lot of the time, 12, 13, 14, 15 is the time when they grow, right? So they always need to be aware of their bodies because it's changing all the time, okay? So it's another theme you'll see. Anyway, now we've got that fir first one down. We're gonna build up from that, right? So we got here, one, two. Ooh. Here, one, two. Here, one, two. Here, one, two, okay? All right, let me see that. And guys, try to pick out from their body movement, okay? Okay, that's the first section. As I said, I like to start with the ball handling, gets you warm, gets you thinking, etc. okay? Next, I'm gonna go with the touches, all right? Call them touches because it's getting your, you know, hand-eye coordination, touches at the rim. It's very important, right? Sorry, me. How yeah. How you do that for your team that you're coaching to start? But they learn, they're learning it every week and picking it up every week because some guys at different levels can't do that. It, exactly, but you tend to your level, you know, and that's why you build. Okay. This was just a, an example, but you can any combo. You know, it doesn't have to be a particular thing. It could be something that you have in mind that you so want to work you, on with your kids. Give time with this. So how long would you give? Five minutes? Five, seven, okay. however you feel comfortable, you know? You just look at the structure of your, of your practice time. Yeah, but I'm just not asking back what you... Personally, five minutes. I might do like five, five different reps, all right? So I might, first rep, second, second rep, third rep, build up, right? Just as many as you feel comfortable with your kids. All right, next one, touches, okay? I like to... If you look at the square, right, you got a lot of coaches, most coaches will say, you know, right at that top square right there, and you'll go in, okay? 
I like to look at the whole square. You see that? Especially you see guys like Stefan Curry in the league, you've got bigger defenders, etc. They put it all the way up there, right? All right? And every, everyone's at different heights as well. You have to think about it. It's relative to the individual. Okay, so they might see the backboard at a different, you know? So I like to say, okay, well, find your spot on the, on the, on the, on the back, on the big square, okay? Get your touch right. Because anything that could happen, right? It's basketball. So a lot of the concepts I do, same foot, same hand finishing and different things like that, right? Because, again, it's, you might get a bump and you end up on the other foot and, you know, you just throw it up, but you want to make sure your touch is good at the rim, so, etc. So, the way I like to start, right? Face this way, okay? And get a good plant, and up, okay? Here, and up, all right? Now, in terms of the breakdown, when you think about the same foot, same hand finishes, okay? If I'm coming here, right? A lot of people would just throw it up like this. It'd be successful with it, but, in order to really get the, the full whack of the, I guess, same foot, same hand stuff, you see the difference between the first and the second finish, okay? Think about the way in which your spine is built. <laughs> it sounds weird, but the vertebrae. You've got three sections. One, two is the middle part, and then three. The bottom right here is just for kind of in and out. Second way, uh, section, the middle back, vertebrae is made up to twist, right? And up, multidimensional, okay? So we use our bodies to play basketball, so you might as well understand it a little bit, right? So when I talk about the same hand, same finishes, I'll talk about twisting your middle back into the finish. Makes it much smoother, okay? So let me just get a couple of those, all right? It's a little micing, but with the same hand. So you want to start under the basket, find your angle, okay? I like to start right here, the backboard kind of uh, the rim, going right here, because that's a nice step to find the angle, okay? So, right here. Okay, all right? And then I want you to take one step, good plant, nice solid plant, and as you're going up, you're gonna twist your back into that same hand, same finish, and work on that touch. Oh, how many steps is that? Right, one step. Might feel awkward. With your right foot. There we go, yeah? It's all good, try again. Good job. Hope. Oh, now let's go left. It's Mike and right. There we go. Good job. Let's get a couple more of those. Good job. All right. Make sure as well, guys. Ball does not come down here. Why? It's going to get stripped, right? You want to keep it shoulders. I call this the layup pocket right here. You got your shooting pocket, and you got your layup pocket, right? All right. Let me see a couple from you. Go ahead. Good job, yeah, good job, all right, all right, nice one. And guys, you could do as many as you like for them to feel comfortable, and then you could switch it up as well. You might wanna, like, you see, think about an up and under, right? Same foot, same plant, but just up and under, right? You think about when you're coming down the line, uh, across the lane right here, all right? Just working on different types of finishing, okay? It's about understanding how well, yeah, you kind of get the concept, right? All right, you guys feel comfortable with that? Any questions? Anything that you've kind of realized, pointed out, or, you know, do for yourself, and just want to have an idea of how to maybe tighten up a little bit? So what was nice with this one, obviously, you could, um, you, could, you know, you haven't got the luxury of just two players. Mm. You know, I, I do a lot of work in the playground. You could queue them up there, and they're doing it, and then come out and... Yeah. Nice. yeah, yeah, you, you know, you, you do it as you, as you feel, you know, working on in terms of the groups you have, right, you might have a couple of baskets, you could break them up, you might, you know, have them in a line, just go one, and then, yeah. But it's just in terms of the action itself, and then you, you guys are smart enough to figure out how you could put it into, into, your, into your practice time, right? Okay, nice one. All right, and, you know, again, you can start from here with the same foot, same hand finishes, all right? Let me get one more, okay? You wanna come here? Okay? In terms of the build up into it, all right? A lot of people will kind of, uh, okay, there we go, all right? It's a little confusing, especially when they're doing it for the first time, all right? I never learned how to do same foot, same hand finishes, and it took me a while to get it when I first started learning it myself. But an easy way to kind of just start is opposite. Opposite foot equals same hand, 
all right? Opposite to same, all right? So if I'm taking a dribble with it, all right? I'm gonna step with my opposite foot, the next one, I'm going up, all right? The concept of that is, all right, I'm sure most of you know, but just to re-explain, uh, re okay? I want you to come and try and block me. Don't hurt me, all right? Come on this side, all right? Okay, ready? Oh, damn. All right, you got, you got me. Good job, all right? Now come, same thing, all right? You ready? That's much quicker, right? All right, so just a, just a little thing that kind of changes up and you can kind of lock onto, all right? And then again, you could do with the inside hand, just switch it up, but really just, as I said, I like to start with the ball handling, build out with the touches, and we kind of go from there, right? Anyway, let's go from the top. What time am I on, guys? Thank you very much. All right, so now, going with the concept of the chops that we went for in the, in the ball handling segment, all right? What I want you guys to do, okay? We're gonna have a double chop, okay? And then we're gonna use our lines and our angles, all right? One thing that's, I think, quite important is to understand lines and angles, right? So if you think about it from the top of the key, right here, where do you guys think like where do my, you think about where do most guys drive? Where you know what? What's the angle right here? Do you have an idea? Okay, let me show you. All right. So down here, this is downhill, down line. All right, down line. Okay. Yeah. Like here, here. I would like to say from the elbow. All right, down the line. Okay. And then you might have another. This is across the lane, right? Right here. To the, the, the hash mark, okay? And you can think about it from either in the wing, all right? A lot of the time when we're driving, we're gonna go one of two ways. We're gonna go right here, okay? And then we're gonna go either across the lane or we can switch it to down the line, okay? If we're driving this way, all right? We'll be here, we're, at, we're going to the basket, of course, but say if someone cuts us off and we wanna spin across the lane right here. All right, so understanding our angles, all right, it's important, especially for the kids, okay? So we're gonna use right now just the one, okay? And we're gonna go double chop, all right? We're gonna head fake, all right? And then we're gonna go right here to the elbow. At the elbow, I want a quick split or head fake, all right? Then we're gonna go down the line into a same foot, same hand finish, all right? That's the first one, all right? Let me see it. Run through it a couple of times, guys. Good job. Good job. Go ahead. Good. Okay, well done. All right. Just from those, what do you guys think is the focus right here? All right. Let me just have somebody, please, give me one focus that you might think in terms of the finishing, the, the way in which they're moving. What do you think? Brian? Change the speed. Yeah? Absolutely. No, it's important. Now, you think about. Go ahead. Okay. So, I get here, right? We got a guy on the inside. Because we always have to think about having someone defending us, right? Because that's basketball. So firstly, momentum, right? We use this right here as momentum. Think about a pendulum, right? If the string's short, right, and you spin it, it's not much, it doesn't really, uh, you know, not much force is, uh, is accumulated. You've got a longer string, we've got a, longer, a much more force, right? So first of all, in order to get there, I want to be able to use my ball placement, okay? Same with the Euro, right? Yeah, it's kind of bringing me over, all right? So the momentum is, on this one at least, here, up, okay? It's kind of, I'm sucking the ball, I'm sucking the air, and the ball's bringing me forward, okay? That's one thing. Also, come on, guys. Go ahead, I want you to do, you go for it real quick. 
right? That's all right. I mean, he, he, had, a, he had an arm bar. That's cool, all right? But you want to defend me? All right, we're just going to start from here. Uh, OK. All right there, as I said, I'm bringing this momentum, but I'm also keeping the ball away from his hands, OK? So these are small details. Mm. And you've got to have the defender on your hip. What we tend to see at, uh, in the skill development nowadays is that potentially before you go for the same foot, same end finish, you fall and put opposite foot shield at the same time in order to shield the defender that you're spearing into you. Okay, let me break that down now. Okay, so if you want to come here real quick. All right, remember I talked about right there from when we're doing same foot, same hand finishes, what's the first step that I'm taking? Opposite, right? Okay. So right here, I'm going towards the basket. But if I'm defended, right? And he's a good defender. He's quite strong. Okay. You're going to defend me like that? Yeah. You're going to give me that rank angle right here. Okay. Look, come. Come back. All right. Move that foot in a little bit. There we go. Okay. Now it's like I don't, I don't know if I, hmm, it's too strong. I'm probably going to end up out here, right? No. We want to use our line. We want to stay true to our lines. Okay. So, wait, hold up. Look. There we go. Okay. Look at that little, that, that weak spot in between his legs. All right. I'm going to use that weak spot against him. All right. So as I'm traveling forward, remember I've got some momentum right now. I'm just stood still. But I want to get my foot right here. Okay. And naturally, uh, bump him off. Okay. So you talk about. The last step before you pick up. Basically, in order to shield on the stomach. In order, you, you, you're saying if the guy's on, the, yeah, on your hip here? He's playing you hip to hip, downhill in a straight line. Okay. And saying? Most of the time, you have a long wingspan, so they can still block the same foot, same end finish. I mean, you. true, true. The concept, as I mentioned before, is that they're not really expecting you to go up that quick. But also, if you've got long steps, right, using your ball placement to advantage, all right, and you're, you know, getting a good plan, etc. Solid. But if, as you said, the defenders might be a little tall, that's when we think about the, okay, look at the big square. All right, we might want to get a little floater instead. Okay, so I might instead, instead of the, the layup, all right, I might be here, same foot, same hand, float. All right, that's my right hand, guys. I'm sorry, I'm left handed. Okay, but it's the same thing, right? You might even want to come down. Inside hand, right here, OK? There's different types of finishes. I'm not just saying same foot, same hand to the basket, that's it, all right? Because he might be a little big, OK? Which is why we want to get our touches out, you know, all the way kind of to out here. We want to be able to finish from out here in different ways, OK? All right. OK, thank you, guys. Last one. What time are we on? Time around. Five more minutes. Okay. So let me get um, let me get three guys. One more. Let me get one at the top of the key. One in the corner. Okay. Top of the key has the ball. Come on, please. You good? All right. So just a little drill. Two man drill. You could have three men. You could have one on both sides of the court. All right. Three and three. All right. So sticking with that same concept, right? We could hear, we could head fake, we could hear, we could cross, all right? We could even think about, you know, we might have a, a screen right here in the middle, right? And we might offset to the screen and then go down, all right? If anything, if the defender drops off, we could shoot, right? It's about reading and reacting to the game, okay? These are things that I think we should be teaching our kids from a young age, all right? So a little, little drill I like to do, all right? So we're going to stick with that same concept here. All right, this is what I want you to do. All right, a little head fake, or it could be here, or even if you want to cross. All right, we're going to get to the elbow. All right, as we get to the elbow, I want you, we call it shaking up, okay? Timing, all right? All right, so once I get here, you're going to be here. I'm going to, a little inside plant, a little inside hand pass. Now, think about your angle. Where are you at? You're on the wing, right? Yeah. So 
the same concept. I want you to get in here, and you could either cross between your legs like this, you could cross between your legs like this, or you could overhand cross, right? Overhand cross, here, underhand cross. We do an underhand when the defender's high, hands are high, we do an overhand when the defender's hands are low, okay? And we think about the overhand cross especially, I like to do that one, you know? Because it kind of really leads you into your, into your shot, okay? So I want you to do that. Sorry? Overhand cross, show me the overhand cross. If you think about, like I said, another thing I like to, a lot, a concept I like to give the kids, I like to give the kids concepts so they can understand, all right? As I said, it's about body awareness, right? Especially when they're young, all right? So I like to say, think about you have a string attached from your elbow to your knee, all right? When you're doing the overhand cross, right? As you get more advanced and they start shooting with one foot, okay? It's all in one motion, right? So there's a string attached. And you can think of other concepts yourselves, okay? But right here, overhand cross, you might want to get into it like this. You could just go straight into it. All right? Pushing overhand. Come right here just so you can see it with the defender. Left hand, put it down. Yeah? See, I'm, all right? Kind of gets me into the, into the move quite quickly. Okay? So real quick, I'm going to shake up, and then you're going to have a little cross right here. And you get to the basket, okay? All right? Go ahead, my dude. All right, nice job, nice job. All right, can you guys show me a Euro? Same thing, yeah, do you wanna go ahead? All right, let's get a Euro from you and you could go after him and just do it a regular, okay? So I want you to Euro, all right, here, here, okay, to the middle. Finish with your left hand, okay? Go ahead. Uh -huh. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right. We'll get to that segment, all right? So just honestly, guys, the Euro step, it's a way of the game these days. It needs to be taught from a young age, I believe, all right? Build the foundation and you grow with it, right? It's the same thing. Think about the concepts, right? Ball placement, side to side, activating your feet, etc. Something we could talk about on another day, hopefully, okay? But real quick, just in terms of the progression of this one, all right, we'll get you coming up, all right? You're gonna defend him after this. Okay, so let me show you how it works. We're gonna do the move, however you want it, right? Coming up, bounce pass, all right? Now I'm defending, okay? I want you, firstly, to try and get across the lane. I'm trying not to let you get across the lane, okay? So one, if you go down here, I'm not, you know, you're kind of letting him go, it's kind of 80%, 70%, okay? All right, you get it? All right, start from the top. Go ahead, my dude. Timing, yeah, good, good, good job. All right, one more time, one more time, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Do you wanna switch it up, you got defense? Yeah? Cross, yeah? Yeah, good job. All right, and remember guys, we're working on that same hand, same foot stuff, right? So let me get one more, see if we can get the same foot, same hand. And if anything, I would love if someone came down, defender right here. All right, I would love, wait, give him the ball real quick just so he has it. All right, if someone crossed here, uh, stepped in, gave him the bump and went up, all right? Let me see it. Same foot, same hand. Bounce pass. That's all right, that's all right. Good job, guys. All right, you see how it kind of connects a little bit? All right, I think I've run out of time. Is that correct, Lloyd? All right, guys. Um, any questions real quick? Just whatever's on your mind, something you've thought about in this time, something you might have thought about beforehand. James, please. Um, you've worked in the US with US high school kids. Sure. What would you say is the main area, skill development-wise, where we're behind, say, the American? Or maybe we're ahead of them in certain instances, but what, what, do you, what do you think the difference is? I mean, I would say an obvious one is work ethic. As we most, most of us know, it's the competition out there, you know, the, the, the pathways they have out there compared to here. It gives a, 
adds a little bit of that hunger, right? Um, so that's, that's one thing, you know, just getting in the gym and actually working on the stuff. Because they know if I'm not up at seven in the morning going to the court, a court that they have access to, right? <laughs> Um, then they're just going to be, get left behind by their fellow, fellow ballers, etc. Right? We don't really have that here as much. Okay? So that's one thing that you know, needs to change, I believe. Um, in terms of the skill level, to be honest, there's not... I mean, training is a relatively new thing, I think. You know, the concept of skill development and stuff like that. Um, so now you, you are seeing more kids that have their own personal trainers. Right, so they are using more of these moves in the games because they're confident because of the fact that they're at home during the summers or whatever, they've got their own little personal trainer in their, in their area. Right? Um, in terms of the coaching, it's not as much put in, but um, Jerry Quinn, who I was learning from out there, he, um, he's a prep school coach, he's pretty big on, on doing the skills. So what, he'll, he'll kind of have the first 15 to 20 minutes or so is based is, is just really skill development right and then he'll go into his actual practice time breaking down different drills four and four three on three weave etc but the first 15 to 20 minutes is skill breakdown you know coming from the wings right cuts etc etc um, and i think it's something that really should be inbuilt into the practice times um, because you know it just gives kids confidence all right and adding these concepts of okay body awareness all right um, how to use the ball placement to the best of your ability to actually help you get to where you want to go, you know? Little things like, you know, stepping in, getting him off you, all right? Not coming over your knee when you're dribbling, not splitting your legs too far apart, keeping a tight base, okay? These little things are going to help build the foundation, okay? Help them understand. And, you, you know, you see me doing all these things, right? Okay? If, say you're not as confident, okay? You're creative, right? You can show them through words on how to do, all right? You don't have to be able to, okay, I'm gonna show them all these spin moves and dunks and stuff like that. Of course not. It's, it's about giving them an understanding, reading, seeing how they're actually moving as opposed to just the actual drill itself, you know? That's gonna help them understand them, all right? Because a lot of the time, the reason people have personal trainers or whatever is because they need someone to see what they can't see or feel, all right? And especially when they're younger, they don't know how they feel because they're growing, right? So it's about teaching them how to understand themselves and then breaking it down to a point where, okay, how can you be effective on the court? Yeah? Anything else, guys? Uh, I like how, obviously, you kept the one concept, like, for them to focus on. Hmm. Mm. Uh, in your sessions, do you always keep it to just one concept or like for different age groups, whether it's your pro, pro athletes or junior athletes, would you maybe add in two or three different finishes or would you just try and focus on and just one particular thing? I mean, I like to, to be honest, I don't come too far out of like if I'm working with an NBA guy or an overseas guy or a young kid, I keep a lot of it relatively similar. Right? With the younger ones, I wouldn't focus on, I wouldn't do too much because then it's like, okay, you lose, you lose your base, right? They've already forgotten the first thing we did, all right? So with the younger ones, I might focus a little bit, okay, today we're going to focus on these two concepts, all right? It might be your base, it might be the angle, and it might be, or, you know, three, it might be the same foot, same hand finishing, etc. whatever you want, right? The older, you know, the, the more experienced guys, I will add a few other things, I'll, you know, maybe add something within their offense or something that I know that they do, especially, you know, their speciality, okay, like, while he likes to, you know, he's, he likes to pop out from the post and make, it, make a little, little pop out move and quick, you know, so it's, you just kind of tailor it a little bit as they become more advanced, okay, but from the younger generation, okay, I would, firstly, I would teach all the kids the same. So if you're a big kid, a little kid, whatever, they need to have a foundation of skills, right? Especially, as I said, the way in which the game's going, right? But, yeah, you just kind of tailor it to, 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 the, to the ability and, you know, obviously you guys know your kids, so it's what they can actually take in. But, 
yeah, I like, to, I like to keep it pretty streamlined in terms of the sessions. I don't like to, you know, all right, we're doing this now, and then let's go all the way over here and do something completely different, you know? But then also, you want to think about how many sessions have I got in the week? What's the build-up? What's the progression? OK, maybe day one, we, we do change of direction, different things that are involved in that. Maybe day two, we do this. Maybe at the end of the week, we end up in post moves, all right? All of them are doing it, all right? Because they all need to open up the game, expand the game, not play within a box, right? just because of their position. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Sorry if I over-talked on that one. Any more questions, guys? Sir? Uh, I have the impression that uh, here, in this country, where we may only see the, the players twice a week, we have to create a different learning experience from North America. Yeah. Where they may see the players every day. Sure. And where they can, what they used to call automatics. They mm -hmm. work on them, work on them, work on them until the players have uh, this real good skill. So it, it seems to me that once we teach the basic moves, we have to set defensive challenges for the offensive player to interpret and solve. Mm. rather than teaching them, you do this, you go there, you do that, mm. and now you've got five minutes to practice. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? Well, I like, to, you know, I like to really build camaraderie. It's something I've always been, um, you know, I've always enjoyed bringing people together, right? So as coaches, what I would do, I would encourage kids, okay, especially in the summer times when you could be outside, you've got courts, etc. cetera, all right? Now, you might have something that you want to work on within your sessions, right? And you might not have that much time to... To, to do the skill development stuff. I do advise that you do find some time because then you can create kind of, okay, this is my way of doing the skill development, right? This is my kind of stamp, okay? So now, okay, this is coach, so your name is? Jack. All right, this is coach Jack's way of doing skill development, all right? Now you've got your kids understanding, okay, these are my terminologies, these are my, the way in which I teach the concepts, etc. okay? And once they understand, okay, I need to come in, you know, we're going to start, we're going to start with ball handling, this is how we do it with Coach Jack, we're going to end up doing finishes at basket, and then we're going to build out, okay? Now they have an idea of how you like to do it, then maybe you can get some practice time back by encouraging, okay, kids, now I want to get through this stuff because it's the middle of the season, you know, we've got things to work on. Now you need to really love it enough, and if you're intrinsically motivated to become better, this is the program, this is the stuff that you know we do, you know how I teach it, okay? I want you to go home with your buddy, your teammate, and get it done, right? And especially, okay, you see how I was using these guys to show, okay, it was very brief, but even with the step in to get him off me, right? A little bump, okay? And then uh, you want the kids to, to be that defender and also be the offensive player because then they could get an understanding from both sides how to actually play, okay? So that's why I say couple them up or get three of them, you know, in the workout group, encourage workout groups outside of what you do because then you can actually get the kids to work on certain things with each other and understand the game and learn the game together, right? So... That's probably, um, on the way down here, we were talking about that, that the um, areas that have a lot of outdoor hoops, Mm. They put in an hour of practice with the coach. Yeah. They might put four hours of practice on their own, right? But you want to make sure that when they are on their own, that they're doing it in the right way. So you want to make sure that you're keeping tabs on, okay, they're coming to practice. Are they actually getting better with certain things that they're doing? If not, why? Okay, what are you doing on your own? Show me. Okay, cool. Hey, remember to do this, all right? Oh, yeah, yeah, I got it, coach. All right, cool. Go back when you're on your own time, and you know? So when we have to utilize what we have, right? We don't have much court time. So how do we get that back? All right, guys, thank you very much. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> you need your for sure, Mark. yeah. I right. talk too much, yeah? I know, I'm sorry, man. I asked a couple questions, that's all. All right, go ahead.
I told him that. <laughs> it's better if you don't use it, Mark, because yeah. Uh, yeah. the sound is very diffused. Yeah. I, I can't hear. You know, you know everybody can hear me. How's that, man? You well? Oh, how's everything? It's a long time, man. Yeah. yeah. You good? Welcome yeah. to Spencer Wood in the ice. Thanks, Lloyd. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you all here. Thanks for being here. And uh, I've been out of the loop a little bit, so it's great for me to be amongst my brothers and sisters. So thanks for being here. Listen, we, we're really short of time. I've only got an hour, and somebody's stolen some of my minutes. So we're going to get going here pretty quickly. Um, but a few important principles and tenets to begin with. We are in a coaching clinic. So uh, let me get into a little bit of philosophy first. And um, I think it's one of my main things, I, I see many faces who have been on my various coaching award level two and three, so you've heard these things before. But um, it's important to maximize um, what is usually, in this country anyway, limited practice time. So that's uh, hopefully what I'm gonna show you a little bit of today. Um, and I always used to say to my players and also all the coaches that I've helped along the way that every second on this court is precious time. And I really mean that. So as soon as you walk in the door, there's some things going to happen that are going to make you, if you're a player, a better player, and if you're a coach, a better coach. That's if you're around me. And I know some of uh, the people I'm looking at now also manage to do that. But it is hard and it comes with a bit of experience. But my message is it's up to the coach to create that efficient environment um, which has also got to be inspiring to the players. Um, you know, the, uh, the learning and teaching uh, of what you do between the lines every day or every practice is super important, um, especially in our country where the access to practice time is, I think, still limited. Uh, you know, unless the things have changed in the last five or six years that I haven't been around, but previously in the last 40 odd that I have been around, it was the case. So, um, 
Preparation is the key. And some of you will know my acronyms. I love those. P-A-T-D. Pay attention to detail. I say that to the players. I say that to the coaches. And it's super important. And whether you're coaching in a practice or in a game, that acronym should stay with you. And again, it's up to you um, to make that happen. So your whole raison d'etre as a coach um, is to help your players to improve and be better every day. If you're in it for other reasons, have a little think and look at yourself in the mirror and figure out what it is you're actually doing. Okay? And my three things, I always say this to the coaches on, on the courses, is if you can take care of these three things, you'll go some way to achieving the, the bit I told you before, i.e. to make these guys better. Now, I'm hoping, no, I'm going to tell you that I'll make them better in the next 30 minutes. How about that? Okay, because we're going to PATD even with these guys. I've already told them, thank you for being here to help us demonstrate, but it's also a free practice session for them. So they might as well work on their game while they're here. And these are the three things as a coach. Fault recognition. What has gone wrong? Fault diagnosis. What am I going to do about it? And then fault correction. Get in there, teach. And help the player on his or her next rep to do it correctly. And that's how you produce better players. It's pretty simple stuff. Now, repetitious drills and repetitious practice with guidance from experts, i.e. you guys, us guys, coaches, that equals skilled higher level players. Again, there's no secret about that. You've, you've heard the 10,000 hour practice rule, you've read Malcolm Gladwell's books and others, you know. The bottom line with that stuff is, yeah, you need access, but what often happens with that is people say, oh yeah, 10,000 uh, hours of practice to shoot like Steph Curry. No, 10,000 hours of practice, yes, with guided help from an expert. And that's the bit that's hard, especially for kids in our country. You know, <laughs> don't tell me you can go and improve your game on an outdoor court on your own. Ah, it's limited. Go shoot around by all means. Use those things, especially now that our governing body seems to have refurbished your nets. You know, God help us if that's all they can come up with to help improve the game. Give me a freaking break. Anyway, um, I like, therefore, in terms of all that maximization of practice, etc., and time, I like to have as many full court drills as possible. Um, because what that does, it incorporates some conditioning. And you're not going to have enough time to do the conditioning away from the, the practice, probably. Unless you're in an academy, and even those, some of those don't have the time. Or unless you're in a pro team, and even those still don't have the time. You know, I don't know how many teams practice two a days every day. Where's Coach Hildreth? He'll remember our time at, Bra at Brighton. You know, we practice two a days every single day. We're a pro team. What the hell do you expect us to do? Come to work. <laughs> I'll give you time off for lunch. But that's what all the, uh, the teams in Europe do. And everybody, you know, when I got down to Brighton, were like, geez, who is this guy? He's crazy. Two times a day? Hell yeah. We were never any good, but that was down to the players. Where is he? He's not even listening over there. Okay. So what I like are what I call multi-purpose drills, and that's incorporating several fundamental skills and game-like transferable skills. That's also a key. Don't just do drills that have no relevance to the game. Um, and again, that's down to your practice, uh, your preparation, um, and your uh, acquisition of knowledge. Um, your continuous professional development, etc., etc., to make yourselves the best you can be as coaches. 
and only then can you make these guys better. Okay, so without further ado, um, I've only got a short time, so I came up with this drill. It's going to be bang, 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 and um, we'll see some... I don't know if I'll get through all the progressions. There's a million progressions, but we'll get these guys going, and it's called the, four, uh, the full court four corner drill. Okay? Some of you may have seen it before. Listen, there ain't any secrets in this game. I probably stole this drill from somebody else. Coaches are the biggest thieves in the world. You know, we're all stealing drills and ideas off each other, but that's, that's our deal. Mind you, it's a lot easier for you guys today than it was for me and Coach Packham and Coach Singer when we had to do it by airmail letters to our friends in America or in Europe. Um, these days, it's just a couple of clicks. Anyway, um, here we go. Guys, uh, I need three guys down there with basketballs. Hustle. Three guys in this corner with basketballs. Let's go. And then the other guys split up in that corner and in that corner without basketballs. Let's go. Okay. Here's the deal. <clears throat> On the whistle, young man, first in the line there, first in the line there, you're going to speed dribble down the court. Speed dribble down the court. Now, coaches, I don't care which hand they use. As the drill goes on, and it depends on the level of your players, you can use this with, eh, maybe not beginners, but you know, just after beginners. They can, I'll leave it to them to change hands. Okay, so for today, we ain't got time to mess around. Speed dribble your way down the court. While they're dribbling, the first guy in the, uh, in the lines here, you're making a V-cut, you know what that is? Walk it, and you're gonna pop open around foul line extended here on the wing, and extend your arm to receive a pass. So when, you're, when you think you're open, get your hand up. Now, dribblers, as soon as you see that hand, extended, you're going to pass off the dribble accurately to the hand. You got it? Good. So far, so good. Now, young man, you're going to catch the ball here. Again, coaches, we'll work on the footwork later. You know the deal. You know, f forward pivot, outside pivot, your, maybe your preference, rip through, I don't care. But you're going to get into the triple threat position. A skill that's been left behind a little bit. Everybody happy with that? Now, the guy that passed the ball, you're going to sprint and make a little fake away from your pass. So you've passed left, fake right, and you cut to the basket for the give-and-go return pass. Okay? Everybody happy with that? The rotation. The guy that passed the ball, collect it and go to the other line. The guy that scored the basket, join the back of this line. Any questions? Go! Stop! Come back. When did I tell you the drill was going to start? I did. I said on the whistle. P-A-T-D, baby. Got to, got to keep them active. Let's go. At the same time, let's go. Good. Good. Rebound, change lines. That land, that land. Rebound, change lines. No, no, no. They'll get, they'll get the rotation wrong until they get the drill. Let's go, let's go. Full speed on the dribble. Full speed, let's go. Stop. Right, I'll try and do this a little bit on the fly. Reset, reset, hustle, move, job, job, move. No, you don't have to go. As long as we got three guys in each corner. Jeez Louise, you just be... Okay, when I say reset, they think, oh, go back to the original positions. All right, listen, I mean, I, I'm not here to teach today. 
so I can't keep doing the stoppages, but please note that you, I would have, if you're lucky enough to have this, an assistant coach here, an assistant coach there, and they're dealing with the details for the guys on footwork, etc., etc. Plus, if you've got assistant coaches who are young and in shape, they can add a little bit of defense or, you know, get one of those tackle dummies or one of those swatting things, blah, blah, blah. But the deal is here, look, the, at the moment, the dribbler, you're waiting for this guy to get open. That ain't no good, because by the time you've started your dribble, he ain't going to be open anymore. So you put the ball on the floor and let him do his own thing. You just keep speed dribbling. Go. Ah. <laughs> good man. Go. Go, go, go. Finish it. Now they're outsmarting me. You know that's going to happen. Come on, let's go hustle. Hustle. Passer, get the rebound. Passer, get the rebound. Nice dunk, young man. That's what I'm talking about. Cut! You see, bad habits down here. If, if this was my team, I'd be stopping the coach. The guy there, he's just making a straight line run for the basket. So did this guy. That ain't no good, but at the moment, we'll accept it. I want them to fake away. Oh, look at this guy. Yo, yo, big fella, what's your name? You do things the right way, I like that. Go. Change sides! Now you don't have to go back to your original positions, just do it. Toss the balls to the other side. Ready? Action! Bust it! Let's go! Halt! Guys, uh, I'm not bothered today because they, they didn't really even warm up and uh, the way things are going in the NBA Finals, with everybody coming up like this, listen, this is full speed on the dribble. I call it AGS, at game speed. All your players must do everything AGS, because if you practice slow, you'll play slow. And then when you come up against proper opposition, like, excuse me, foreign teams, you'll get blown off the court. So, uh, today I don't care, but boy would I be on these guys because they're going too slow for me already. Sunday morning, I've been on the go since six. What have you guys been doing? Bust it! Yeah, nice. Let's go, get open. Hit him, nice. Okay, reset. Just give me the three guys where they should be. All right. Next progression. Watch carefully. Having passed the ball, you're going to do exactly the same thing. You guys are in triple threat. I'm faking away from my pass, but now I'm coming back to the ball. Now, coaches, it's up to you. If you want them to take twos, tell them. If they can take threes or twos, that's no problem. Today, I don't care, I'm not teaching. But what I do want is to be in what I call the shot ready position. So you're coming to the ball with your hands ready for the catch and shoot. Okay? Obviously, you're rebounding the ball, but now let's add another skill. Remember what I said. These are multi-purpose drills so that you can incorporate a whole mess of skills in one drill. Big fella, now you make a great pass to the shooter, but now you cut to the basket anticipating an offensive rebound. So you want to watch the flight of the ball and get ready to either tip it in or offensive rebound put back. You all know those, that terminology, right? Okay, go. Bust it, bust it, let's go, bust it. Hit him earlier than that. Fake away, come back, shoot it. Let's go. Change the lines as usual. Let's go. Oh, no, no, no. Wait till he comes back for the ball. Bust it, bust it. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Get open, hey! Get 
open here. Stop daydreaming. Triple threat. Yeah, bad habits. Bad habits. But I'm not here to teach. But you'd be on that. As a coach, I won't let anything go. I used to tell my players, Danny's over there, you can ask him. Even if I've got my back to you, you're working at the other end of the court, I know if you're making mistakes. Some of those guys used to say, coach, how the hell did you see that? I'm like, yeah, do everything the right, th the right way. We haven't got time to mess around. Okay, reset, nice shot, swish. Ain't nothing like that. No better sound in the game than the swish. Yeah, three guys in each spot. Three guys in each spot. While I'm talking, you can organize that. Okay, look, coaches and you players, you, you see, they might not have seen this before, so it's a, you know, a little bit new. You know, this little bit of footwork is just so important, but how many guys can do it? And they're going, you know, AGS. So it's, it is hard, plus, okay, now let's refine things a little bit. These guys here, should be in the right position, some of them are a bit too low, we'd be on that. In the triple threat position, with an eye seeing their teammate. And now, when you deliver the pass, I have all sorts of phraseology that I use to simplify things. Make it what I call a shot pass. In other words, you put it right in the shooting pocket so the guy can just catch and shoot. He doesn't have to mess around with it because we ain't got time. There's a defensive guy closing you out. Ready? Go. Hit him. He's already asking for it. Nice. Bust it. Good. Let's go. Get open. Go tip it in. Tip in the missed shot. Tip it in. Tip in the missed shot. Or put back the offensive rebound. Good. Okay, you've come down too far with that dribble. As soon as he signals for it, let it go. Let it go. Speed dribble. Speed dribble. Hit him. Good, good, hit it. Nice shot, young man, that's all right. Hey, tip in that offensive rebound. Hey. Don't think you're getting away from me that easy. How are you? You're well, good yeah. to see you. That's all right, finish it, finish it. Tip it in, tip it in. Good, reset, reset. Okay, you do want, you do want to see some agility in here. Getting the dude tippings, you know, that young man could have tipped that, I think I could have tipped that one in. He was happy to stand here, flat-footed, rebound, put it back. Game-like situations, this is a drill for all purposes as you can see all levels pretty much and look at all the skills already if you're so moved to work on them all I don't know it's up to you I'm just showing you you know stuff that has worked for me over the years okay this time and by the way you keep swap changing sides of the court I might not have enough time to keep changing but will you get that okay so this time <clears throat> let's do it with these guys Having caught the ball on the wing, okay, you're going to make a shot fake and then you're going to drive hard to the basket, okay? The guy who made the pass now, you're still doing your thing that you just did, okay? So you fake away, you're coming back anticipating the shot, but he's going to drive, okay? You cut to basket and he shouldn't, he shouldn't miss a layup, but just in case. Ready? Go. Hit him when he's open. Shot fake, try it. that's traveling. Let's go, let's go. Hit him. Shot fake, travel. I got 0 for 2 already on fundamental skills which should be taught at the age of dot. In the fetus, I would have taught that. In the fetal stage of somebody's development. 
Holy Ghost. Change sides. Let's go, guys. On the hustle. You've got to change quickly. Ready? Go. Speed dribble. Get open. Hello. Now, you see they're cheating on the, uh, the V-cut. Look at this. This is English slow-mo basketball, as we've known it for many years. I, I can't stand this pace. My kids, I tell them, coaches have always asked me when I make that statement at, at clinics, oh, but what about the little kids? Shouldn't you walk them through stuff first? I'm like, no. <laughs> now, listen, I'm, a, I'm an ex-teacher. I understand the pedagogical, I almost didn't get that word out, stuff about walking people through stages of learning and all that crap. But I want them to go AGS, and if you make a mistake, so what? You're at practice. That's what practice is for. Make the mistake, have the expert, you, the coach, help you out so that the next uh, repetition you make, you get it right. So let them go full speed. If you dribble the ball off your foot, who cares? Shot fake. You see, we look at this on the wing. Isn't it awful? The footwork, the, it's awful. That's not a shot fake. So, you know, I'd be working on that. That's a shot fake, except again, he does this business. What are you guys teaching at the freaking lower levels? Anyway, stop, reset. Okay, I'd be all over this, and by the way, and Coach Devereaux will attest to this, even at the pro level, when he was my assistant way back in the day, I'd have him stand right here, right, Rich? To take care of all this stuff. I hate that shit. Why do you have to go from here to here to drive? Go here and then go here. What's this back step? All players do it. When I read the book on fundamentals, I never saw that. When I sat with uh, James Naismith in 1901, I'm not that old, but I am pretty old. You get the idea, don't you? Change sides, same drill. Fake, uh, shot fake and drive. Ready? Go! Speed dribble. Get after it. Let's go. Shot fake. Drop. See, I like this big kid already. I like that kid already, because he listens and he's trying to do things right, just from what I said. So I like this guy as well. See that? Ballroom dancing, I call that. Dancing. Dancing. Freaking salsa or some shit like that. That's not basketball. Reset. So at some point, you're going to have to do this. We won't do a lot of this, but obviously, speed dribble, V cut to get open, signal for the ball, shot pass, uh, excuse me, make the pass away from the defense, outside hand. Now, catch and shoot on the wing. Catch and shoot on the wing. Again, I'm not prescribing twos or threes. Um, with my pro teams, we used to mix it up for obvious reasons. Um, although the mid-range game is, you know, apparently no more. I don't buy that. So it's up to the players today. You can shoot twos or threes, but it's catch and shoot. Now the guy at the top who's just passed the ball with a great pass, you're still doing your little footwork and you're cutting to the basket, tipping any missed shot or putback. Go. <clears throat> Is this, is this useful? Is this any good? Useful stuff? Yeah. Oh, man. Don't just say that to make me feel good. I'm too old for that crap. I've been fired three times. I'm immune to everything that basketball can throw at me. Let's go. Listen, I got fired for winning. I got fired for winning in this country. How about that? Have you ever heard of that Never before? No, ask Lloyd. 
Ask Lloyd, he was my starting point guard. <laughs> Good, nice shot. Hit it. Okay. Get the offensive rebound if you can't tip it in and put it back. That's like clear some bodies while you go as well. I like that. Just clear them out. Stop, reset. Hustle guys, reset. Now, next progression. <clears throat> okay. You now receive the ball as you've just done. You rip through. You make the rip through move. You, all, you guys know what that is? So on this side, you're going left to right. You hard drive to the paint. You, you get the paint. And now, the guy at the top, you're relocating to the vacated spot. You all know what I'm talking about? This guy here is gonna kick it out for the catch and shoot. Okay, so that's rip through, drive, get the paint. This guy, relocate, catch and shoot. Action! Rip through. Oh, you exposed the ball. Rip it. If I put my hand in there, break my fingers. Change sides. Are you at which side are you on? You're on the correct side? Good man. Don't forget, tip it in or offensive putback. Pass, relocate, catch and shoot. Coaches, you expect the shooter to be... Holy shit, no respect in this building. Especially as I was the first coach they ever had here. Show some respect, PA announcer. Anyway, listen, coaches, um, obviously you'd be working on the various details of the dribble penetration, how you, how you come after getting the paint, how you're going to kick that ball out. We expect a nice shot pass, etc., etc. As I said, I'm not here to teach, so we'll just keep on going. Good. That's going to get stolen. Chase sides! Same move on the other side. Ready? Why aren't you guys there at the, at the spots already? How long does it take you? You've got to work out, man. Get in shape. Go! Here's a ball. Believe it or not, we need that in basketball. Pick it up! Get it to a spot. Let's go. Oh, now look, we're going in slow-mo again. Holy ghost. Pick it up, guys, pick it up. You've gone back to slow-mo. Okay, young man. Yo. Yo. Watch the flight of the ball, yeah. and it'll give you a bit yeah, of an edge yeah, to right. get a rebound position. Of course I'm right. What do you mean you're right, you're right? What the hell? What's that, modern-day kids' language? You're right, coach. Of course I'm right. WTF. Let's go, let's go. You see how they've slowed down already? We've only been going 20 minutes. I wouldn't keep this drill on that long, though. We'd go maximum 10 minutes. But boy, would we be going hell for leather. Let's go, let's go. What's happened to the spots? Okay, let's look at this next one. You guys pay close attention. Right, young man, just walk down here. Just, no, don't dribble the ball, walk. Right, you've passed the ball, you're open on the wing. Hello, get open where you're supposed to get open. Right, hold it there. Triple threat, okay. No, 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 triple threat. You're making your little bit of footwork. You're gonna come back to the ball. Okay, watch carefully. You're gonna 
pass the ball to him. Okay? Go ahead. Now, as soon as you've passed the ball, make a little fake up towards the sideline and cut hard back door. Signal for the ball like you want it. You ain't going to get it. No, he ain't going to get it. Not today. While he's doing that, you're making a shot fake and you're going to dribble to the spot he vacated on the perimeter. As soon as you get to the paint, watch carefully, you're going to make what we call a button hook move. I'll even demonstrate it for you. You're, you're, you've cut back door, okay? You come in here, you make a little button hook, and you come back to the post and ask for the ball. Then you're going to make some sort of post move. Again, you could prescribe it or you can let them do their own thing. Today, go ahead and explore all different types of post moves. Now, as any guards in here? Of course, we love this part of the drill because we like to show the big guys our post-up moves. Having passed the ball to the post-up player, you're going to what we call spot down. And you're in the shot-ready position, twos or threes, I don't care. You're not passing it to him, we're just drilling this guy so that it becomes a habit that this is what they do instead of English basketball players, maybe not in the last few years, because I noticed there's some academy and national team coaches here. I don't want to diss you guys too much, but back in the day, Coach Packham, Coach Devereaux, Coach Singer will all attest to this. This was how you watched English basketball, especially at the national team level. Pass and stand still. That's how we used to play. Anyway, not, not anymore. So, again, terminology, coaches, I'm sure you're familiar with the terminology. Pass to the post, spot down. Now, let me do this while I'm in full flow. Again, I'm not worried whether the players can do it today or not. But while this guy is dribbling on the perimeter, what's he or she actually doing? Any coach, what are they doing by doing that? Jack? Not, yeah, a little bit of that. Yes, player. Oh my goodness, he's even got the terminology. What's your name? King King. King King. <laughs> Creating a passing angle is the correct answer. You win today's star prize, two tickets to Hawaii. See Sam Nita after the show. And now you can stipulate, again, game situations. Now, by the way, and I ain't got time today, defense can come into this drill. You have to make sure the players understand the rotation of the drill first before you can add defense, because the rotation gets a little bit more complex. Or you can have your assistant do it. But anyway, create a passing angle, and now, what type of pass to enter into the post? Is it one of these deals? Okay. Is it one of these? We don't know. Let the players... Let the players explore. Thanks, guys. Reset. Any questions? So, pass, pass back, cut back door, button hook into the post, Create a passing angle off the dribble. Go. Get him when he's open. Shot fake at the top. There's too much information. Information overload already. Don't forget, shot fake at the top, then you dribble over. Look at this guy. Stop and stand still. Pass and stand still. English player. Fake away, come back. Hit him. Fake away, come back. This guy looks like a player. This guy looks like a player. Except he passed probably with the wrong hand there. Let me down. Shit, he, look, he was looking like a player up to that point. Uh-oh, don't lose your dribble, young man. See all the little details, P-A-T-D? You've got to be on them, otherwise how do they learn? Yeah? No, that's, is that a backdoor cut? That's Sunday morning stroll. Yeah, you see, what the hell's that? I thought you were a player. You've got the same or similar colour shoes to me. I thought you'd be a player. You've made the right choice with the shoe colour. Uh, stop, reset. See, this is where I have to, t you know, I can't stop. I'm glad I'm back. I haven't coached for a few years. 
But once I'm between the lines, Alan knows. Something happens, man. It's like riding a bike. You don't forget shit. Look, I'm upset at all the little details which I'd have to be on if, if this was my teaching group, okay? Um, and again, coaches used to tell me, oh, you know, you're constantly on that kid to do it right, do it right. Well, it depends on the level of the player, that's the first thing, whether they can accept the teaching, um, or you have a cadence, don't you, to your corrections. You might let, you, because you've been on the same kid maybe twice in a row, you might let, ne let the next one go, even though he or she's still doing it wrong. But my thing is this, time, baby. How much time have you got? If you're in the academy, you've got them every day, maybe. You know, or if you've got a video camera set up and you can do video playback, maybe. But not everybody has that. So again, it's down to experience. But, you know, I went through all the details in my demo, and yet here are the players, and by the way, you know, I love these guys for being here. I don't know what program they're from, but, you know, to me, I always used to, when I was a bit cynical, only about yesterday, um, I used to see, look at a group of players, and Coach Packham and I used to do this when we coached junior basketball before hardly any of you, what well, most of you were born. In the early 80s, we'd go and we'd just look at players and we'd know uh, probably who their coach was, but definitely if they'd been taught properly. Just by little things like that. Where's purple shoes? You saw me getting excited because the here he is with the KDs. He did, you see, all my drills, my previous progressions have a knock-on effect to the new progression. So you can't forget the five things you've already done on the previous five progressions. They're not there just because, you know, I'm reading it in a book. They're all to do with making you a better player for the game. So when KD does the little fake away and come back to the ball, I'm thinking, yeah, this kid is a player. He shows his hands. He catches. He gives me the shot flake like I asked him to. I'm thinking, yeah. So now you go over here, the, the cutter is just... I never use the word, <laughs> Rich will remember this, I never use the word run or running when I'm coaching. Not basketball, cut! Well, half-court basketball, okay? Obviously you're running up and down the floor. Cut! Gives the whole thing a new connotation for the kid. Because the running is what you're seeing today from this back cut. How the hell are you going to get open just doing this and hardly getting the paint and then just turning around? That's all BS. That's not basketball. That's not individual fundamentals. So I'm on all of that stuff. Cutting, not running, and then suddenly they think, oh yeah, I got it. And then you'll get this. Pass, boom, boom. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> no, no stretching. Okay, I, I'll leave it there, otherwise I said I wasn't going to teach, but <sighs> put my uh, mortarboard on. I'm there, Christina, you know me. Okay, action, go. Let's go. Shot fake. Oh, lesson one, make a good pass. Basketball 101. Pick it up, let's go. Button hook, post move. What are you doing? Spotting down, shot ready, shot ready, young man. What size feet have you got? I like it. How tall are your parents? My dad's only six foot. Is he? Yeah. What the hell? I wish I'd been Jared in those jeans. His dad's only six foot. I used to go around the streets of North London looking at the kids' feet and hauling them into practice if they look like. Right, S? Yeah. He, he remembers this shit. <laughs> Oh, look at this, we've gone, we've gone local league pace. Oh, that's nasty. We've gone local league pace again. Come on, guys, pick it up. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Stop, reset. Now, I think you figured it out, because I did say at the top of the show, 
that it's a multi-purpose drill to incorporate a little bit of conditioning as well. So this, ho this whole speed dribble full court stuff, of course you don't need that, you've already figured it out, but well, what the hell? Get the kids a little bit of conditioning while they're in here, what the hell? Okay, so now let's look at some more um, progressions. Young man, walk it down, get open, hit him, hit him. Okay, triple threat or rip through now because we've, we've covered those things. So now you're making your little bit of footwork, but now you're going to screen on the ball. Okay, so we can go through screening mechanics. Also, you'd, I haven't got time today. Where do you want your screen set? Foul line and above slightly. How do you want this angle? You know, we can go through all that. You know, a quick, a quick one until you get into the you know, higher levels of, of basketball and you've got time to scout and everything. You know, if you're Real Madrid, this thing here, you've got about 12 different things you can do on it, offensively and defensively. Shit, we're in Brixton. So as a general rule, have your back facing the mid-court corner. That's what I used to teach. That'll do for now, okay? You are gonna use the screen correctly. So if you've got a screen like that today, show me from the triple threat position what you do. Don't let me down, KD. You're in the triple threat. He's come and set you a screen. What are you gonna do? I knew it. Wrong. Don't take it personal. As he's coming to set the screen, you dribble away and then come back and receive the screen like so. Because you want to set your defensive player up, whatever your terminology is. Coaches, you kind of knew that. Listen, no disrespect, man, I didn't want to, but we're here on a coaching clinic, so of course I'm going to help the coaches to understand. Okay, so now you know. Uh, you might want to swap that ball if we've got time, because I want you off the dribble. So now, here's the option, guys. Everybody happy? You pass, you screen, ball screen, if you want to use the terminology. You're going to come off the screen, okay, and you're going to clear on a couple of dribbles, and then you're going to pull up and shoot. You are going to roll to the basket and tip in the rebound or offensive putback. And then the rotation remains the same. Got it? Reset. <laughs> Action! Go! Hit him. Okay. Now fake away, come back, set the screen. Off the dribble, shot, let's go. Set the screen. Yeah, you see? Listen, no, no disrespect to these kids, but you can see, just on stuff like this, they haven't been taught. I'm sorry. I don't know if their coach is sitting in this audience even. But you, no, you'd have to be on it. No, I'd say, he's bad. You're still involved with this guy? What the hell are you bringing him along for? <laughs> Come on, let's go. Full speed, guys. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Lloyd. Reset. I mean, you know, like I said, the fundamentals are really poor, um, but that's for another day. Um, you know, you've got, you got kids who think they can come off a ball screen using their right hand on this side like this. Okay. Right, this time, you're gonna dribble off like you've just done, clear some space, and now you're gonna hit the rolling player off the screen. Okay? Now, there's three or four different passes we can practice, isn't there, coaches? You know, in a games-like situation. Again, for today, 
we'll let the kids see what they can come up with. But you want to be, you know, is it that one hand bounce pass? Hey, where's the big fella? Maybe where he is and there's another kid who got up as well, red shoes. Yeah, maybe throw an oop and let's see an alley on the end of it. Go! Ball screen, dribble, roll. Hit the back cut. Nice pass, young man. KK, I like it, man. He's working on his game. Listen, where are you from? Where, are you? I'm a little bit older. I got, I got joined in. <laughs> Who's your coach, Matt Shaw? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't that tell us what? I'm saying that to everybody. He's from, he's from Derby, a little bit older. And as immediately I said, is your coach, Matt Shaw? I know Matt's going to be doing some stuff. It just shows you. Make a good pass. Make a good pass. Ball screen. Ball screen. Dribble off. Roll. Hit him. Okay. You need to put something on that. Put something on it. Or is it this ball? Yeah, it's that ball. Okay. We'll, a poor workman always blames his tools. We'll blame the ball. It's deflated. <laughs> Hit him. The, oh, the wrap around one hand bounce pass. I like it. Provided the defense doesn't steal it. Coach. Hard work, coach. Hard work. Yeah. Hard work. Do, 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 do. It is hard work. These guys have slowed down some, but that's okay. Circle, let's go, hustle. You guys did a hell of a job. Thank you. Thank you, 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 thank you. Thank you. Keep improving, keep loving the game. Stand here, coaches, appreciation. Okay. Um, I'd like you to have gone AGS. We slowed down a little bit, but I have to finish with a knock on you guys, because you guys kill me, man. The players kill the coaches. No, I love you guys. If it wasn't for the players, what the hell are we doing here, right? That's why we're here. So God love you, God bless. Keep working hard, keep improving. Coaches, we are really short of time, but Coach Veer has got a classroom session now, and Coach Gardner said that um, if you've got any questions for me, because we've got to get off the court, then we'll take them in the classroom, okay? But uh, thank you very much, Lloyd, for having me, and coaches, thank you for your attention. I love you all, God bless you.